So here we are at Purdue University. This is a great site um, if you're looking for help with your MLA formatting, but we're going to take a look um, at the commas rules really quickly, as many of you need just to review this before you begin publishing your rough draft. So you're going to go down through these quick rules. We are going to uh, use commas to separate independent clauses when they're joined by coordinating conjunctions. You're going to use your comma after an introductory clause, phrase, or word. Uh, you're going to use a pair of commas in the middle of a sentence to set off a clause, a phrase, or a word. A lot of times this is going to be um, a person's name or a place. Do not use commas to set off uh, elements of a sentence such as clauses beginning with that. Uh, remember, that's one of the rules for embedding is not using a comma with that. Um, separating using three or more words, phrases, or clauses written in a series. That's the one that most of you know. Using a comma near the end of a sentence to separate contrasted coordinating elements or to indicate a pause or shift. Use commas to set off phrases at the end of a sentence that refer back to the beginning or middle of a sentence. Uh, here's what we want to focus on for a moment. Use commas to set off geographical names, items in dates, except the month and day, and addresses and titles in names. So a lot of you with World War II are going to have dates and things like that. You want to make sure that you use commas to set off um, the place and the year and the month and the day will not have a comma. Use a comma to shift between the main discourse and a quotation, which that's embedding quotes that we know, and then wherever necessary to prevent possible confusion. So this is a great place to come to review uh, comma quick rules. Okay, so here is an example of a student from last year and her introduction. There are three parts to a well-written introduction that I'm looking for. The first is your hook. Remember, your hook needs to be an engaging way that you are um, capturing your reader's attention, drawing them in to the topic. So some of you are painting a picture of a tragedy of the war. Some of you... Um, like this student is using a direct quote uh, from the person that you're, you're researching, but you need to have a hook. So here, uh, this student wrote about a man named Gail Helverson, and um, the student's hook is, as the notable World War II Air Force pilot Gail Helverson once said, the small things you do turn into great things. And then the background begins. And this is the second part that I'm looking for. This is where you give your reader background on not only your topic, but also the time period of World War II and the Holocaust if it applies to your topic. So Gail Halverson was born on October 10th, 1920, and always wished to be a pilot. He grew up on his family farm in Salt Lake City, Utah, and has vivid memories of planes soaring over his home, fueling his desire to be in the Air Force. As World War II began, Halverson was accepted to take part in a pilot training program. The event of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941 convinced him to join the Army Air Corps. So this is uh, giving some information about the war. This is developing the topic of who this person is. Then the last part of your introduction is your direct thesis statement. And I have seen all of your thesis statements. So please be sure to write the same thesis statement that I have seen here for the last part of the introduction. So this student's direct claim is Gail Helverson had an impact on World War II, that's the claim, and then this student's three um, things that they're focusing on. Through delivering supplies to Berlin, comma, putting forth Operation Little Vittles, comma, and spreading meaningful opportunities. That's your introduction. 
Now the next step will be to take those three phrases and put those into meaningful topic sentences, which I've seen many of your topic sentences as well. Remember your topic sentences should be a direct statement using the same information from this thesis statement and also should uh, have good transitions and also a link back to this introduction in some way. Okay, the next step will be to begin publishing. So here we are in Word. You'll go to Office 365 and you'll go to Word document. If you have your own computer you and you have access, you can just go to the Word on the, on the desktop. Um, remember, we've done this all together. We did this in the Media Center together, but I'll show you just some things as I'm looking for correct MLA formatting. So the first thing that we're going to do is insert our um, page number and uh, header last name. So you're going to go to insert and then you're going to go to page number and then top of page. Once you get to that you go down to the third one. Scroll up here. All right and then you're going to type your last name and then a space and then um, don't do anything else. Highlight it and then change that to Times New Roman 12 because remember that's MLA rules, MLA Times New Roman 12. Okay, now we can click off of that um, and now we're going to type our first and last name and then we're going to type English and then period and then next we're going to type my name and then the due date is tomorrow, well, excuse me, Wednesday, uh, so March 17th, 2020. All right, after that, you just push enter one time, and then we're going to um, go to the center button. So you're going to center a creative title. So here I would like a creative title, not just like my World War II essay or Omaha Beach, but something creative. So something like um, the tragedy of Omaha. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, so something creative there. All right, so now you're going to highlight all of your text and you're going to make this times your Roman 12. If you know how to do this, then you could fast forward through this video. Uh, just a reminder. Um, and then we're going to highlight all again and then we're going to go to paragraph, uh, which I'm sorry, I right click and then you go to paragraph. And here's some things that some of you forgot to do last time. You're going to go to line spacing and then you're going to go to, to double, but then you're going to take the spacing before and after the text both to zero. Um, and that prevents extra space, okay? So now you have a double space document. Okay, so once you have uh, your creative title, you're gonna push enter. Um, you're still centered and you're going to go back to left alignment. And now I push tab and I just um, begin my um, introduction, so my hook. So I'm looking for those three parts, the hook, the background, and the thesis statement. And then um, what I want you to do after that, after you have your full introduction written, I want you to give me topic sentence um, one, two, and three, okay? Just basic information. Topic sentence one, topic sentence two. This is just for me to check quickly as we're moving through the research process and the, the essay process. Uh, I want your three topic sentences. So remember, just as a reminder, we need to think about um, transitioning through our paragraphs. So you're gonna wanna think about transitions. You're gonna wanna think about varying your sentence structure. You don't wanna have the exact same sentence. Many of you on your research outline had the exact same sentence structure, the same words. We don't want that. We wanna vary those sentences. So um, switch up the uh, topic um, to the back of the sentence, start with the verb instead of the person's name, um, some things like that. Then the last thing I want you to do uh, for Wednesdays, I want you to, to go to the second page all the way down and I want you to type your correct work cited. So here's what we're gonna do. This is where we're going to go back to uh, the center and you're going to type works cited, enter. And then you're going to go back to 
uh, left a line. Okay, so the Works Cited page, if you remember, needs to match your um, your full citation for MLA. So if you did the databases, then remember those are all done for you, and you just completely type the exact same thing, but you don't need that really super long URL. We did this together. You have this on your research planning sheet. Um, your three sources correctly written out for your Works Cited page. So you're going to put these in alphabetical order. Um, and then you have to have a hanging indent. So let me show you how to do that um, for your Works Cited page. So you're going to start typing. So I'll just um, do something that we know. So uh, uh, Gary Schmidt is the author. And then Trouble, remember, was our um, book that we used before. All right, and so then I'm going to highlight the entire thing and right click. And you're going to go back to paragraph. And then up here, um, you have um, special indentation right here, special. And you want to change that to hanging, okay? So after you type it, then you'll go back and do hanging. And so the hanging indent, what the hanging indent does is it doesn't indent the first line. It indents all the um, lines consecutive after that. So that's what hanging indent does. So what is due for Wednesday would be your full introduction, three parts, three topic sentences with varying sentence structure, thinking about linking back to your thesis statement with whatever your topic and your focus of the war or the Holocaust, and then your full works cited page written correctly. Thank you.